हैव डॉक्टर निधि मिश्रा हवेली uh, हवेली संगीत द ट्रेडिशन ऑफ पुष्टि मार्ग पुष्टि मार्गीय कीर्तन uh, सभी को नमस्कार uh, यह मेरा सौभाग्य है कि मुझे इंडिक एकेडमी के द्वारा ये अवसर प्राप्त हुआ कि इस पुण्य और पवित्र भूमि श्रीरंगम में एक कॉन्फ्रेंस में पेपर प्रेजेंट करने का मुझे अवसर प्राप्त हुआ तो इसके लिए मैं इंडिक एकेडमी को धन्यवाद प्रेषित करना चाहती हूँ मेरा टॉपिक है नाउ आई बिगिन माय पेपर एंड माय टॉपिक इज हवेली संगीत and uh, as we are moving towards the end of the of the present day uh, today of this conference so i think that uh, my paper uh, though it uh, shares some of the brutal medieval scenario facts related to the medieval scenario the prevailing conditions in the medieval period but undoubtedly it is about uh, uh, the music uh, theme it is based on the music theme so i think that it creates some musical environment also so i begin my paper Uh, let me introduce my paper uh, my paper it tells about the haveli sangeet tradition and uh, we uh, are aware uh, most of us are aware that haveli sangeet is a unique feature uh, which is associated with the pushti margiya temples uh, my paper it also covers that with the course of time this great legacy has witnessed its gradual decline uh while researching for this paper i found that academically too not much comprehensive research work has been done on this topic some books i found some research papers i found uh they just uh, discuss elaborately about the music related details but they miss the uh, connect with the medieval bharat and its effect on the evolution of haveli sangeet so this paper it, it tries to incorporate and it is an effort towards establishing a connect with this history of hardship and struggle and glorious rise of bhakti and this tradition of temple music in vaishnavism particularly in northern india uh, for this paper i interviewed some of the serious practitioners also and based on their experiences i hope uh, i have uh, added those experiences in uh, while writing this paper and on the on the basis of that i think that uh, it will certainly help in the revival of the haveli sangeet parampara in uh, the coming days so first of all let's discuss the references of bhakti in ancient texts uh, bhakti uh, is an emotional and intense relationship of a devotee with the divine and most of our sacred texts ancient sacred texts they profusely speak about bhakti and its importance in realizing the supreme the idea of bhakti has even influenced the highest the highest texts of wisdom in our tradition that is that we find the reference in the shvetashvatar upanishad also uh, where we find this verse uh, which says he who has his highest bhakti towards devtas and so for his guru to whom to him who is high minded these teachings will be illuminating so reflecting upon this verse ramanujacharya the great uh, philosopher saint of india he says that merely by shravana manana and nidityasana one cannot attain moksha according to him the person on whom god chooses to shower his grace is that one who is dearest to god and for this he says priyatam ev hi varaniyo bhavati we find references of bhakti in shrimad bhagavad gita and uh, 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 he, where shri uh, lord krishna exalts the superiority of bhakti and he says even if the vilest sinners worship me with exclusive devotion they are to be considered righteous because they have made the proper resolve so in this way we can say that an alloyed and unwavering devotion it has been stated a mean to enjoy the everlasting bliss of unison with the lord now there is uh, one more aspect which i want to cover through this paper and that is about the temple desecration in the medieval period the brutal re reality of uh, the uh, medieval bharat and the evolution of bhakti movement during those times in northern india particularly so in the medieval period numerous vaishnava temples were desecrated and the rich heritage of ancient india was vehemently destroyed this was the unsevering spirit of bhakti which helped people get some relief even in those times of distress in such atmosphere of deep disappointment many dharmic devotees they came forward and they acted as the beacon light for the disheartened hindu community and so as a result of that enormous offshoots of the bhakti mark primarily in vaishnavism they came into existence and some worship the saguna uh, swarup of the ultimate and some worship the nirguna swarup but the final aim remained the same that was to surrender oneself to the lord in this uh, in alignment with this saguna form of ishwar bhakti 
where originated the pushti mark as my previous speaker has uh, uh, shared some of the things which i have covered in this paper uh, pushti mark in the 16th century and it was based on the bhakti of lord krishna as shrinath ji and vallabha chari ji who was the proponent of this sect he says because here i am establishing a connect with the then scenario the then uh, scenario of turbulence and tumult in the uh, sharing his, uh, or lamenting over that scenario vallabha chari ji in uh, shri krishna shre uh, a part of shodash grantha he speaks about his age in this manner he says here i am quoting him he says the malachas have surrounded all the holy places with a result that they have become infected with evil besides the holy people are full of sorrow at such a time krishna alone is my way so he experienced that in those times it would be difficult for people to practice even the simpler rituals of devotion so he experimented with a new form of bhakti naming it pushti and pushti is the way towards attaining the foremost grace of ishta lord krishna through devotion and selfless service so in the bhagavad puran as it has also been discussed previously there are nine types of bhakti shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakya atmanivedena nivedanam so among these kirtana holds a prominent place hansford pushti marga temples of vallabha said they too became the major centers of this kind of kirtan bhakti in the vikram samvat 1556 when vallabha chari ji was staying at some village in govardhan ji in the bridge he received this information of the appearance of some of a divine uh, bhagavat swarupa from the cave uh, in giriraj mountain he immediately went there and there he found that swarupa and he gave it the name shrinath ji and so immediately a rough shelter was also erected over the swarupa and so began the tradition of the service of lord in the temples in the form of a small child service in the form of kirtan began as soon as uh, the this uh, practice began and soon after that the service in the form of kirtan began and so uh, vallabha chari ji himself appointed kumban das ji as the foremost disciple and he was the first kirtanya of shrinath ji kirtanya is the kirtankar uh, in the course of time this kirtan tradition it was called haveli sangeet as during uh, that time in the medieval period the term haveli was applied to the temples of the pushti marg in uh, gujarat and rajasthan particularly and uh, it in the beginning it was the desire of uh, vallabha chari ji that majestic haveli should be constructed uh, for lord but later on uh, we can we know that uh, during the reign of aurangzeb out of fear of destruction this practice of building huge temple haveli stopped yet the name of these temples remained the same and the deities had to be kept hidden in the smaller houses of the devotees yet the rituals of their worship uh, continued fervently and this perseverance resulted this is very remarkable the perseverance it resulted in the unhindered flow of bhakti and it flexes among the bhaktas till today in its original form only now ashta chap and the kirtan tradition in pushti mar the tradition of seva started by vallabha chari ji it continued during the time of his son vithal nath ji also so finally vithal nath ji himself he himself was a great poet and musician he thought of giving a systematic form to all this and so as a result of this he created uh, this group ashtacha which was a group of eight devout devotees consisting of four ardent sevaks of his father shri kumban das shri sur das Shri Parmananda, Shri Krishna Das, and four of himself: Shri Govind Swami, Shri Chit Swami, Shri Chaturbhuj Das Ji, Shri Nanda Das Ji, and all of these eight poets. They were the brilliant poets and as well as singers. And Vittal Nadi named it Ash Ashta Chap, or uh, in the common parlance, it has been said Ashta Sakhas. The poetry is written and then sung by these Ashta Chap poets. The eight reprints of the Lord were the zenith of devotion towards the Ashta Bhagwan Krishna. so here is another aspect also in the medieval period indian music it saw uh, the music uh, the stream of music uh, so the river of music it got divided into two streams one was the court music and another was the diwaliya music and both forms of music evolved into complete separate dimension because the sheer purpose of singing was altogether different the court music which was sung for impressing the emperor uh, whereas the bhakti music was meant for eulogizing the ishta deva the music that was sung in praise of the mughal emperor later on it lost all its sophistication of the essence of indian spiritual thought and the objective of creating a music that uplifts in such scenario the temple music of pushti marg had a quintessential role in preserving the sanctity of bhakti music by the purity of ragas 
all efforts of ashtacha poets were directed towards keeping the perennial spirit of bhakti alive in its pureness through their kirtanas the kirtan ka showed superior resilience to then forces of distortion and saved music from any sort of undue corruption the first kirtan kar of ashtacha kumbandas ji was a popular singer of his time that is why vallabhacharya ji he directed him to offer his kirtan as worship before the lord haveli sangeet it has a corpus of his padas so many padas of kumbandas ji are there and which are sung regularly in the uh, temple the most popular is uh, here i have quoted girdar lal ras bhare khelat vimal vasant radhe radhik sang urat gulal abir ar gaja chirkat bharat paras par rang bajat tal mridang andhuti bina murli tan tarang kumbhan das prabhu ye vidhi kreed jamuna pulin lajavat anang the other well known uh, and the most esteemed ashcha poet of haveli sangeet ji is uh, surdas ji it has been uh, discussed before also in some in a paper and he was blind by birth but Uh, this limitation it did not become a barrier for him in his path of manifesting his reverence towards shri krishna by composing impressive padas of devotion in one of the prasangas of the vartha literature vartha literature was also discussed before so um, they, uh, this all I, i think you know that it is mentioned that once girdhari ji son of vithal nath ji he played a trick upon surdas ji and so after bathing this varupa of lord he put no clothing and asked surdas ji to sing and to his surprise surdas ji sang exactly as the lord looked at that time everyone now came to know that krishna lived in his heart and he viewed uh, lord with the help of his inner vision his language was simple yet full of multi layered meanings which delighted even the ordinary audience among almost all his compositions are quite popular the most important of these i have quoted here so i am rushing through There is an anecdote from the life of Chaturbhujaji. Sri Chaturbhujaji used to sing all the divine pastimes of Lord everywhere. Sri Nathji had bestowed such blessings on him. And uh, one day, Kumbandasji was having a vision of the pastime of Lord in which the Lord was sleeping. So he started singing these verses: "Ve dekho Bharat Jharokan Deepak Hari Pode, Uchi Tre Chitra Sari. Look there, the lamp is burning behind the curtains, and the Lord is sleeping." Shri Kumbhan Dasji sang this much. Then Chatur Puj Dasji he started singing. Gay uti sundar badan neharan karan bahut yatan rakhi kar pyari. On hearing this, Kumbhan Dasji understood that Chatur Puj Dasji he has got complete divine experience by the grace of Shri Gosai Ji. Shri Kumbhan Dasji was very pleased to see this grace. So uh, the uh, these mystical uh, poetries of the poets of Ashtachap complemented the seva tradition. of the pushti marg and gave gave new dimension to the ashtayam puja nam sankirtan is the only mean to feel the divine bliss and uh, being a vaishnava saint acharya vallabha had witnessed the chanting of sanskrit verses as a mean of worship in the normal vaishnava temples so he uh, thought of uh, trying to replace the same ritual with the verses in the bridge dialect so here uh, we can see the difference so uh, in the regular vishnu temple the verse is uttishth for waking up the lord uttishth dish govind uttishth garud dhvaja uttishth kamalakantam trilokya mangalam kuru while the uh, in the pushti margya aveli uh, sangeet the pad sang is like jagiye gopal lal janini bali jai utho tat bhayo prat rajini ko timir ghatyo ayo aaye sab gwal bal mohana kanhai so there this is the difference between uh, the pada sang in the normal vishnu temples and the pushti margya temples so what is important is the bhav of the uh, kirtankar while singing the bhav of the kirtana is an important aspect of the uh, of the display of love towards the lord the verses composed by the poets are full of vatsalya sakhe shringar sayog piyo veeras adbhut ras rodra ras vairagya ke par saundarya bodh etc the ragas of the kirtans in the pushti margya temples are typically based on the classical theme of the bharati music trupas the use uh, the usual tal uh, while singing hymns are chautal archa chautal dhama teen tal etc and uh, shri gosai ji he set up nine forms of the lord to be worshiped by his disciples and these are commonly called nidhis of the lord nidhi mean an ocean limitless the nidhi swarupas are indeed the ocean of praise so here in this chart this i have taken from pushti mark.net and here in, in this chart uh, the swarupa is mentioned the physical form of the lord is mentioned the principal bhav of that particular swarupa is mentioned and the current location of that swarupa where it is located for example shrinath ji 
The physical form is a dark black stone image carved in high relief of Sri Govardhan Dharan. That is Sri Krishna who has lifted Mount Govardhan for the good of a uh, good of us all. And the principal bhava is Adi Bhut Vatsalya Madhurya Sakhi Dasya. And he is savior of devotees, beloved of Gopijan, leader of Rasa, and it is located in Nadwara, Rajasthan. These are the nerve nithi. So, Aurangzeb's reign and relocation of Sri Nadji uh, and other Pushti Margya deities. So, all the suffering suffered by people of Bharat for centuries was only the build up to the heights of religious bigotry that was to befall the country in the reign of Aurangzeb. We all are very much aware of this fact of Bharat. Aurangzeb issued a firman in 1669 ordering the demolition of every single temple in India. Images and idols of deities were destroyed on a large scale. So, amid fear of destruction, many, many deities of the Pushti Margya temples were secretly concealed and transported to secure locations. A specific case of the image of Srinathji can be considered the image. This is very important and it shows the utter devotion of the people at that time and how they saved our deities. The image was initially shifted from Govardhan to Agra and secretly worshipped in the house of a devotee. Another image of Navneet Priyaji from Gokul was also concealed there. Then both deities, they left for Kota and from Kota to Kishangarh. From Kishangarh, they travelled to Chopasini, Jodhpur. The priest asked Rana Raj Singh of Mewar. He is the grandson of uh, uh, Rana Pratap Singh, uh, Maharana Pratap Singh. So, he asked, uh, uh, he takes permission from uh, Rana uh, to settle in Mewar. Rana permitted and when the deity reached his spot at village Sil uh, Sehat, the wheels of the bullock cart in which the deity was being transported sank axle deep in mud and could not be moved any further. The accompanying priests realized that a particular place was the Lord's chosen spot and accordingly a temple was built there under the protection of Maharana Raj Singh of Mavir, Mewar. Sorry. Sri Nathji temple is also known as Haveli of Sri Nathji. The saga that brings goosebumps how our deity was concealed moving from place to place and finally reaching to the safer destination and how the local people and the priests performed all the Nitya Karma Puja even in their state of obscurity. So here is the conclusion. Though this tradition of Haveli Sangeet is 5 centuries old, yet it is the most authenticate and underrated style of music, Bhakti music of Vaishnavism. The credit of it goes to the serious practitioners of this art who challenged every attempt of interference with its purity, a vivid lesson to all of us to save our civilization just like our ancestors who ensured the continuity of culture by sacrificing everything. Regrettably, this form of devotional music is on the ver verge of decline. In this age of rap and or pop music, very few people are inclined towards it, particularly the youngsters are in oblivion of this heretic. So, my paper, I hope, it fulfills its intent of being an effort in the direction of exploring and articulating the role of Kirtan tradition in preserving and expanding Vaishnavism in the medieval times in North India. It is also an endeavor to highlight the need for reviving this, this stagnating tradition by reinvigorating the interest of people in this extraordinary culture of worshipping and reverence. Thank you. Yeah, 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 because Pushti Mark. Pushtimarg and Maitreji not speaking. Yeah. Uh, as per the doctrines, Pushtimargi temple is a very wrong notion. Though it has been unfortunately promoted from our side only. But uh, as per the doctrines, it is not the thing. So, Valvachari says, Grahes Thitvaswadharmataha. So, it is completely a private affair and the whole worshipping pattern should be happened in a secretive way. The Haveli term was uh, wrongly related with Vallabh Sampradaya and that's why even the tradition, the music tradition uh, should be uh, known as Pushtimargya Kirtan tradition rather than using the term Haveli Sangeet. So, these are the two major things I wanted to mention. Thank you.